What's up, fellas? Coach Nickel, how are you tonight? Good, good. Y'all doing all right? We're hanging in there so far. Yeah. Um, we will get started. So, Coach, the first question will come from Paul Jones. A lot of good things about Jay Wallace camp and came from that he was doing in camp to kind of catch your attention. Yeah, he, uh, you know, being a quarterback, uh, he kind of understood things uh, quicker. You know, doing all the routes and all those kind of things uh, that took a took a little bit longer, but um, you know, real eager and intelligent <clears throat> and worked hard. And so like anything, right, those three things are pretty important. So he was the ultimate has just kind of been getting better every day um, because of those things. He's more comfortable each and every day. So that's been that's been very, uh, very good for him. And again, I, you know, I told him today we got to be really all our group is uh, in three weeks. We've got to be a lot better. You know, we got to be a lot better in a week. We got to be better in two days from now. So that's kind of where we're at in my room. And so hopefully we'll keep doing that. Next, we'll go to Ben Portnoy. Hey, which we've heard a lot about Javante Payton and Camp. I guess for you, is it, you know, looking at him, what is it that stands out about his game? And I mean, do you feel like that you know things have just started to click for him, or what? What is kind of the thing that stands out most about him? Yeah, I think you know he's he's uh, more mature. You know, even just from just in February, just, you know, just in everything, but just physically and weight room and you know all those kind of things too. Um, but uh, he's no, he's at a really good camp. He's talented, um, you know, and so you know, hopefully that transitions to games. You know, you never know, um, you know. But the way he's practicing, the way he's moving, it's uh, good. And that's what I told him. I challenged him. I was like, you know, basically on offense, you haven't done anything yet. So, uh, and uh, and we laugh about it. But yeah, hopefully he takes what he's been doing, which has been a really really good camp here in August to uh, to game day. Next, we'll go to Steve Robertson. Coach, a lot of talk early on about the tight ends kind of getting absorbed into your group and then uh, Cumbus and Spivey do. However, neither one of them appear to be uh, you know, challenging for too deep. What, what, what do they need to do to kind of get more in the mix with you guys? Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're definitely still in a, uh, you know, trying to still, I don't want to say figure it out, but there's, there's a lot of guys kind of in the same spot. You know, we obviously... I had to throw some folks on the on the two deep there, but it's and I'm not being you know it really is a competition every day, and we're still kind of sorting through some of that. Um, you know, every now and again, a guy's got a you know been a little banged up here and there, those kind of things. But um, I do though; I treat them like they're all the same. You know, I know their body types are different, but what we're trying to ask them to do is is the same. And so, uh, you know, I think it'll be a little bit of a kind of a moving target as we go. Um, just without having uh, as many practices as we'd like, but nobody cares, right? We got a game, so let's go. But next, we'll go to Brian Haydad. So yesterday, when we talked to KJ, he talked about things clicking for him at, at practice on. I guess that would have been on uh, on Tuesday, and, and he felt like that was one of the best practices of the year. Did you, as a coach, did the coaching staff feel the same? You know, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Um, you know, the energy and the tempo was they were they were really 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 excited and we're still you know and and they're a bunch of real coachable kids this team you know but uh, we kind of talk about it's it's your team and you guys create the energy you guys create the tempo um and i think more than anything that's what's starting to happen a little bit you know and, and we want that more and more but the kids are taking more ownership of it and uh you know, that's been good. And I think that's a big part of it. If it comes from the within, it's going to be a lot better than if we're just sitting there yelling at them all day. So I think that's a big part of it. Next, we'll go back to Paul Jones. Yeah, I tell you, do you mind uh, repeating the question? I couldn't. We were, you're were kind of cutting in and out a little bit. Just your thoughts about Garrett Schrader moving his slot receiver and your takeaway with that? Yeah, yeah. it's uh, It's been good. You know, it's only been a little bit now. And so each each day, each meeting, there's a couple things he's, he's trying to take away from all that. Um, 
but he's been eager. He's been good. Um, you know, and so I think he's just going to keep getting better and better. Same thing. You know what I mean? We joke though. He's he's running a little bit more than when he was uh, playing quarterback, and so his uh, his uh, his mind's got to control his body. You know, not the not the body control the mind. So he's he's pushing through that. You know, and didn't probably realize how much we run in practice. But uh, uh, as he kind of gets better with that too, uh, he's going to keep getting better. And then he you know working on his hands. It's been a while since he's caught a bunch of balls, but. He's getting there, and we're kind of happy about it. We'll go back to Steve Robertson. Coach, obviously you have a unique vantage point of the Bulldog quarterback. So what has K.J. Costello done to kind of stand out to you? How, do you, how would you kind of evaluate him as a pass thrower? Yeah, I mean, again, playing him, uh, it's funny. I recruited his area where he was from uh, there in Orange County uh, when I was at Washington State, and then – uh, some of his teammates played with us and then play him against it at Stanford uh, against him. And so, uh, no, always had a big arm, always was going to stand in there, take a shot if he had to, uh, was tough in the pocket. And then, uh, I mean, I, I had heard and kind of figured he was a cerebral guy and a smart guy, and that's what he's been. But I, I've I'm kind of been excited that he didn't just come in and act a certain way. You know, he earned it from our guys and kind of, you know, I think they, they all respect each other, you know, and he was never like, hey, come here, listen to me, you know, especially early on. You know, I, I, I think we all appreciated he came in here and was like, hey, I got to work. I got to earn these guys' trust, and I'm just going to keep grinding. And, and he's kind of a grinder. And I think guys respect that, and that, that's been pretty cool. We'll hand it back to Ben Portnoy. Coach, just to follow up on Garrett, I mean, do you guys have any kind of timeline for when you'd like to see him getting involved and getting in games? I mean, or is that just kind of a play it by ear approach with him? I know he's learning a whole new position and all. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I know it's a kind of a boring answer, but it is kind of a play it by ear, you know. Um, like I said, each day there's more, all right, it's clicking. You know, we'll watch extra tape and he'll be like, yeah, that's right, you know. And, and uh, you know, he knows obviously more than other guys about coverages and, you know, some landmarks and, angles and stuff like that so uh you know you hope it 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 skyrockets uh so to speak um you know soon and i know he wants that he's eager but uh you know again in my room it's kind of all hands on deck who, whoever we got um we're still trying to sort through that a little bit i mean and to that just quickly i mean i know with you know, you mentioned with Jaden Wally being a quarterback in high school. I mean, do you see some of the same kind of similarities in that, like, they pick up the defense? Very, you know, there's a little bit more to it there, having transferred from quarterback to receiver. Absolutely. Once they get kind of the, I don't want to say the footwork, but just all the little intricacies of really just body balance at receiver, then you see how much it helps on the back end. I know, like, Michael Crabtree was a quarterback in high school. He caught one pass, I think, in high school. Um, you know, we've always kind of liked quarterbacks. You know, they touch the ball all the time, so they usually have pretty good hands and have a good understanding. And, you know, intelligence is pretty important uh, within our offense, kind of knowing where to go as receivers. So, yeah, I think it'll, you know, just get better and better, hopefully. We have time for one more question for Coach Nickel. Does anybody have anything else? Steve, with the last question. Coach, what are your – have you ever been to Tiger Stadium before? I mean, how, how do you kind of prepare to, to get into somebody's SEC venues, I guess really kind of the first time as a coaching staff for many of you guys? Yeah, yeah, no, always uh, always heard about it and uh, have never been there. I've only been to Ole Miss and uh, South Carolina um, in the SEC. So, um, no, looking forward to it. I know it will be different, of course, with the – the fans not not being there and all that, but uh, no, it'll it'll be cool. It'll be fun. Yeah. Coach, thanks for your time tonight. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, coach.